This is the day the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning and happy Sunday. God bless you. I thank you, God, for joining us once again. I thank you so much for joining us once again. I am Pastor A.D., Pastor of True Vine NBC here in Houston, Texas. And I thank you so much for all your support. And today I have a mighty word for you, a word that will help your life tremendously. And I'm only speaking to some people today. This word is not for everybody, but it's for somebody who truly need it. And today I want to talk about living life without fear, living life without fear. And we're going to come from the book of Isaiah chapter 43, Isaiah chapter 43, starting at verse one through five. However, our main key scripture is coming from verses one and two, but we're going to read Isaiah 43 verses one through five. So I'm going to pray and we'll jump right into the word of God again. Thank you so much for all your support. We here at True Vine really love you all. and We thank you all so much for everything that you're doing for this channel and for this church. God bless you so much. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, dear God, for the good times. We thank you for the hard times, Lord. We thank you for the struggles. We thank you for adversity, dear God. We thank you for the sickness that's in our lives, Lord. We thank you for everything, dear God, because, Lord, we know who you are, dear God, and we know what you're doing. We know, dear God, that you are doing a great thing in our lives, dear God. We thank you, dear God, for increasing us, dear God. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you have given us. We bless your holy name, dear God. We thank you, Lord, for everything, dear God that you are doing in our lives, dear God. Even when you use the enemy as a tool in our life, we thank you, dear God. We thank you, Jesus, because all you're doing is making us better, dear God, and making us greater. And you're getting us ready for the next level and what's to come, Lord. We thank you, dear God, for you are preparing us, dear God, for something we can't handle right now. And we thank you, Jesus, for making that way and for opening those doors, dear God. And we thank you, Lord, for blessing us and keeping us, dear God. And Lord, I want to speak to fear right now. I speak fear right now out of people. I speak fear. We bind fear right now in the name of Jesus. Dear God, for you did not give us the spirit of fear, Lord. And we thank Thank you, Jesus. And we bless your holy name, dear God. And Lord, we ask you would continue to encourage us while we're on this journey. Encourage us, dear God, um, to walk through, dear God, those doors, to walk through and walk up those hard mountains, dear God. Please, dear God, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your darling son, Jesus, who died on the cross, who rose on the third day third day with all power for our sins. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you so much. And we thank you, Holy Ghost, for dwelling with us daily, day in and day out, for living within us. And Lord, we bless your holy name forever. He who has dear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Oh man, I thank y'all so much once again. And so the topic again is living life without fear. Living life without fear. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 5. Our key scripture is verses 1 and 2. So Isaiah 43, verses 1 through 5. So let's read Isaiah 43, verses 1 through 5. But now, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave you Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba, in your place. Since you were precious in, the, in my sight, you have been honored. And I have loved you. Therefore, I will give men for you and people for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west. Amen. Amen. Again, the topic is living life without fear. Living life without fear. And so Isaiah has the opportunity to prophesy to the tribe of Judah because they're living in a dilemma. The tribe of Judah has found themselves in a tough situation because they have strayed from God. And this tribe is special because this chosen tribe that Jesus, this is the chosen, chosen tribe that Jesus will come through. This is the line, the lineage, his lineage that he will one day come through, that he one day um, be born in the line of Judah, which means praise. And 
But however, they have been making ungodly choices. During this time, they have been making ungodly choices and decisions that is opposite of God's will. Uh, for 39 chapters, Isaiah prophesied to them with a warning about their sin and that God will soon punish them. I don't know how you feel about it, but when when uh, parents love their children, they will punish them. They will chastise their children. And whenever I got punished, I more than likely got a whooping, a whooping other than a punishment and time out and whatever. I'm talking about a real whooping, not a spanking, but a whooping. I, in, a, in my rearing, there was no such thing as a timeout. I, you never heard anything like that with my grandmother, with my mother, and with my aunts, or nothing like that. It was a whooping. You got a whooping. Um, in my rearing, there was there was toughness and hardness, and which will make a person great. I don't know what happened. A lot of people say, well, there's no more big mamas. And so the big mamas are gone. However, but the rearing was real and it was tough and it was love. And after you got a whooping, your your parent or a grandparent would always say, I whoop you because I love you. And that's what God is doing um, in this text. He is whipping the children of Israel, just like he will whip you today. God will chastise you today for your disobedience. And he does it because he loves you. And so what God is, God is telling Isaiah to tell the Judea people is that God is going to whoop them. He's going to whoop them. And if you can back up to chapter 42, verses 23 and 24, you can see the manner in which God was talking to Judah. And God is telling them in those verses that I'm sending another nation to come and conquer you because you are not obeying me. Since you want to continue to do what you want to do and not regard what I'm telling you to do, I have sent other nations to enslave you. He's going to put them in bondage. And the question was raised, who caused it to happen? And God said, it was me. It was me that caused this thing to happen. Some of you have to understand that the challenges and adversities that, that you're facing in your life may be happening because you made some crazy decisions and you walked in some paths that was the complete opposite of what God had said for you to do because I'm your father and I love you and I'm going now I'm going to discipline you for walking in those certain paths the, the, going the opposite direction now is time for chastisement I'm disciplining you and that's what God is saying today he's telling us stop walking in the opposite direction stop going in in different paths and different avenues. Stop taking those avenues. That I'm not telling you to do that. I'm not commanding you to do that. The Holy Spirit is not guiding you to do that. So why are you doing it? You're doing what you want to do. And so God said, now is time that I chastise you. And while you're blaming the devil on all that's going on in your life, God is letting you know that he was the one that brought you in brought this stuff into your life. He is the one. He said, stop blaming the devil. We got to stop this. Stop blaming the enemy all the time. It's his fault. A lot of times it's our fault. We put things on ourselves because of our own stupid decisions and our crazy decisions and what we want to do and how we want to do it. And we take things in our own hands. And then, however, we have God who, who, who put things in our lives. And so we have to realize that, that and you can't bind God. God is going to, when God have things in your life that's going on in your life, you cannot bind God. Be careful who, who you're trying to, what you're trying to bind, who and what you're trying to bind, because you might be stepping on God's toes. So stop blaming the devil for everything. Some things are happening that are happening in your life. Some negative things that have distracted your life is because of you and your bad choices. That's what happened. And some things in your life or because God allowed them to happen. It's happening because God allowed them to happen. And that, that happens a lot in our lives. God allow a lot of things in our lives because he's, he wants to get us to the point of coming to him. He want, he want to get us to that level of praying. He wants to get us to that level of worshiping and praising and singing and, 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 and really honoring him and having that connection with him. God wants you to rely totally on him. Stop depending on your friends. Stop depending on everybody else. Depend totally on God. And that's what God is doing. That's why we experience so much in our life. God is trying to bring that connection together. He wants to have that divine relationship between 
you in him. And that's what God is doing. And some things are in our life because of God. God is the author of a lot of things. And if he's not the author, he's right there. And, and the enemy have to go through him in order for things to happen, to occur. Remember, he went to, the enemy had to go to God to attack Job. Same thing here. And the enemy cannot consume us, those who are saved, Say if he cannot live, the demons cannot live inside of us. So we have the Holy Spirit. So that because we have the Holy Spirit, so the enemy can only attack us from the outside. And so that is what's going on. And the Israel people are in trouble because of their disobedience. And that's what get us in trouble today, our disobedience. And so God is saying, because you chose that path, that thing, that person, I'm going to give you exactly what you asked for. And that's the, remember the old saying, be careful what you ask for because you just may get it. And that's what God, that's what he's saying. He's saying, because you chose this path, because you chose to do what you want to do, I'm going to give you exactly what you asked for. I'm going to show you. I'm going to teach you a lesson. So he's saying, so deal with it and you're going to deal with it. I'm going to take you through it. So look at verse 25 and uh, of that 40. Let's look at let's look at the 42nd chapter, the 22nd uh, um, in the 23rd, 24th verse and the 25th verse, they say, but this is a people robbed and plundered. All of them are snared in holes and they are hidden in prisons and houses. They are for prey and no one delivers for plunder and no one says restore. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will listen and, and hear for the time to come? And who gave Jacob for plunder and Israel to the robbers? Was it not the Lord? He, he against whom we have sinned for they would not walk in his ways, <laughs> nor were they obedient to his law. There it is. Therefore, he has poured on him the fury of his anger and in the strength of battle. It has set him on fire all around. Yet he did not know and it burned him. Yet he did not take it to heart. Now he set it on fire. It burned him. He, 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 he did all these things to get their attention. He did all these things to get Israel's attention. They still did not listen. Look at it. He said, I burned them. They still didn't take it to heart. I put fire around them. They didn't see it. I, I, I strengthened them in battle. They still didn't see that. Uh, I put fury of his anger against them. They didn't see that. He's, uh, he's, I did all these things to get their attention, to get them to walk the opposite direction that I wanted them to walk in. But they still did Whatever they wanted to do, they still was walking in the other direction. They just did whatever they wanted to do. And that's how some of us are living today. We're doing whatever we want to do. And he said, because you did not listen um, to me and take it to heart, you are in trouble. And God said, I tried to warn you, but you ignored me. You didn't even take it to heart. God spoke and he challenged them. He told them to turn around, but they kept going in the same bad direction. Maybe the Holy Spirit has been telling you the same thing today. Um, stop going in that direction. Turn around, but you keep going in the same direction. You don't want to listen. You don't want to listen to God. So now you have to face the consequences. And you remember, we teach our kids choices and consequences. Now you have to face the consequences because of a bad choice. So I'm trying to speak to someone today who has rebelled against God. That's what this message is. This message is to someone who has rebelled or who is rebelling against God. And God has been trying to get your attention, but you are continuing to walk towards the opposite path. You're taking the opposite path. You're going in the opposite direction. That he told you not to go and you're still doing the same thing you want to do. He's trying to get your attention. He's continually trying to get your attention, but you're not listening. You're not um, seeing. You don't care. You, you love living in sin. And he has brought all types of drama in your life to turn you the opposite direction. But so because of your mess, now you are experiencing all type of adversities. And now you're mad at God, not understanding that the whole reason why he brought you, brought the mess in your life in the first place is because he loves you. He loves you. That's why. And that's the thing. He loves you. He chastises you because he loves you. And if you call yourself a child of God and you, and you are a, and you are continuing to walk down the wrong path and God does not chastise you at all, hmm, then you really need to question your salvation. Are you really saved? If you are if you are God's chosen and, and you're continuing to walk down the wrong path, God will whoop you. He will get you. He will put some things in your life to get your attention. What do you supposed to do if you have all this drum in your life and God is whooping you? I'm glad you asked. That's a good question. 
I'm glad, glad you asked. That's a good question. What now? What do I do now? God is with me. I'm being chastised for what I've been, for all my wrongs. And, 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 um, and God is really on me. He's on my back and he's telling me to do this and that and I'm in trouble. So what do I do now? That's a good question. What now? What now? And that's why I love the verse 43. That's why I love verse 43, because I have five good points for you. Five good points for you. Living your life without fear. How to live a life without fear. Five good points, and, and this will teach you how to get out of trouble. Ver, um, chapter 43, verse 1 says, but now. Somebody say, but now. I love it. It says, but now. So there's a transition in this from, the, from chapter 42 to chapter 43, verse 1. There's a transition from what he was just talking about in that last verse of chapter 42, verse 25. There's a transition, but now. So in one verse, he tells us five important things, and I like this. So in the first verse, he tells us five important things, and I love it. He says, yes, I'm going to chastise you. He says, I'm going to chastise you in that 25th verse of the 42nd chapter. That's what he's telling them. But yes, you, and he says, yes, you are in trouble. He says, but now, but now there's a transition, there's a shift. And so let's see what that shift if he, shift is in verse 1 and 43, 43rd chapter. But now, thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob. Let's stop right there. Thus says, but now, but now, thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob. So the first point is God created you. The first point is God created you. So you're not a mistake. You're supposed to be here. You was born with a purpose and God said, I created you. Isn't that amazing news? God said, I created you. That's the first thing. But now, <laughs> thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob. So I created you. And that means that he chose you. God has chose you for something, a great purpose. So you were selected. You were elected. My God, before the world was ever uh, created, God picked you before the world was ever created, before it was ever formed. God picked you. He chose you. He selected you. He elected you. He chosen you. He has chosen you. Isn't that amazing how he saw you and chose you and you wasn't even born, but he saw you before you even existed, before your parents even existed, before your ancestors even existed. God had already chosen you before the foundations of the earth and God operates in a very unique way, out of an influx of people, he chose you. Isn't that amazing? How out of everybody, God chose you. Out of the out of all the drama and all the turmoil that you're going to experience in life, don't worry about it because God chose you. Why worry about it? Why fear it? Because God chose you. You're going to come out of it. You're going to come out of that trouble. You're going to come out of that sickness. God has chosen you. He created you. You were selected with a purpose. Isn't that good news? You was selected with a purpose. That's a sermon. That's a sermon. You were selected with a purpose. Holler out, he created me. I want you to holler out in your homes that he created me. I want you to holler out in your car that he created you in your vehicles. Holler out, he created me. He created me. Whatever you're doing right now, just holler out, God created me. Why should I fear? He created me. Why should I cry? He created me. Why should I run? He created me. Why should I quit? He created me. Why should I fear the enemy? He created me. God created me. He chose me for a reason. That's, that's very important. He has chosen you for a reason. And so and then it goes on in that first verse. It said, and he who formed you and he who formed you. So our second point is he formed you. Our second point is he formed you. So this word means to be pressed into shape, to be pressed into shape, to mold and to form into shape. He is the potter and we are the what? Clay. So the potter is molding and shaping the clay until until it gets into the mold that he wants it to be in. So the challenges in our lives, the things that, that, that got you stressed and worried and crying and pulling your hair out and frustrated, he's using those circumstances to shape you, to squeeze you and to mold you into the person and into the creation he wants you to be. Y'all understand that? He's using those circumstances to shape you, 
to squeeze you and to mold you into the person and into the creation he wants you to be. That's why those things are there. That's why those uh, tests are there. That's why those situations are there. That's why those trials are there. That's why the tribulations are there. That's why the sickness is there to help you get to the next level. God is making you and getting you ready for the next level. For the, It's just a process. Put it like that. It's a process. So just look back over your life and the things that made you cry and caused problems in your life, caused pain in your life, made you the person you are today. Everything you went through in your past made who you are today. He's applying pressure because pressure, he's applying much pressure. God is applying pressure in your life. Every single day, he's applying pressure, pressure from your job, pressure from your marriage, pressure from your children, pressure from your grandchildren, pressure from your finances. God is applying these things because it's there because he's trying to shape you. God is shaping you into something great. You cannot make lemonade without squeezing a lemon. How can you do it? It's impossible. You cannot make anointing oil without squeezing the olives. You got to squeeze in order for the anointing to come out of the olive. So this is very important. God is squeezing us. He's getting us ready and he's squeezing us because he wants to shape us. He's getting us ready for the next level for maturity. He's, he's maturing us in this process. He's growing us in this process. He's sanctifying us in this process. This process of sanctification is very real and God is doing it right now. With all the drama in your life, you should say to yourself that God is getting you ready for something great and the potter does what he has to do to develop and mold the clay into perfect pottery. And you must believe that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. And so sometime there will be some smashing. Sometime there will be some squeezing. Sometimes there will be some damage. Sometimes there will be some pressure. But God is forming you into something great, something of that drama, something that, that some of that drama that you're going through, some of, some of that drama that's in your life, God permitted to happen. It had to happen. It happened for a purpose. Everything happens in your life for a purpose. Everything happens for a purpose and it's getting you ready. It is getting you ready for the next thing to come. God is getting you situated. He's getting you ready. And the Bible says, who has, he who has begun a good work and you has, will complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. And the Bible also says that after you have suffered a little while, I will settle you. I will establish you and I will perfect you. Somebody how out, God is getting me ready. He's getting me ready. He's getting me ready for that day, for that special day because it's coming. He's getting me ready for the next level. He's getting me ready for a testimony. He's getting me ready to, so I can tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus. He's getting me ready for the next challenge. He's getting me ready for the next mountain. He's getting me ready for the next valley. God is getting you ready for the next level. He's getting you ready for the next level. Somebody say, I want to go to the next level. I want to go to the next level. And then that third point comes up in this first verse too. And then it says, fear not, fear not for I have redeemed you. So that third point is I have redeemed you. I have redeemed you. God has redeemed you. It means he has purchased you. He paid the price for you. He bought you from the devil. He's saying, I have saved you. I have renewed you. I have made you whole. Why fear? When you're when you are already victorious, why fear it? You already victorious. You already won the battle. You already won the war. Why fear? Yes, I know sometimes it feels like you're losing, but I'm telling you, you have the victory. We all have the victory. Those who believe in Jesus Christ, because what did he do? He died and he got up on the third day. We are victorious. So how out I'm victorious. Before you were made, you were special. Before you were made, you were special. God made you for a special purpose with a great purpose. Stop telling yourself you're not special. Stop telling yourself you'll never amount to nothing. Stop telling yourself you're stupid. Stop telling yourself you're nothing. You are special. You were made to be great. So it doesn't matter what you're going through. Um, come what may, come hell and hot water, God has redeemed you. He has set you free. He has brought you out and he has gave you a new name. So let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Somebody say, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Somebody will be shouting hallelujah right now. He has shown you special love, special grace, special favor. In spite of how you treat him, in spite of how I treat him, 
God still loves me and he views you as righteous. Somebody shout, he has redeemed me. How many of you know that God has redeemed you? He has bought you for a price. He has set you free, a price that you can never pay back, a price <laughs> above every price. <laughs> oh my God, the ultimate sacrifice. Jesus has redeemed you. He has redeemed you from your mess. He has redeemed you from slavery of sin. He has redeemed you from captivity of depression. He has redeemed you from captivity of drugs. He has redeemed you from the captivity of adultery. He has redeemed you from captivity of sleeping around. He has redeemed you from the captivity of prostitution. He has redeemed you from homosexuality. He has redeemed you from the abuse relationship and from death. God has redeemed you. How many of you believe that God has redeemed you? God has set you free. He has taken vengeance. He has given you the victory. He has transformed you. When he sent his only begotten son, the redeemer, the way maker, the healer, the provider, Emmanuel, the prince of peace, the perfect sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice. Yes, my God, to die for our sins, to redeem us from sin. Somebody ought to shout, yeah. Somebody ought to shout, yeah. God has, my God, he has redeemed you. He has set you free. He has brought you out. I'm telling you, without a doubt, I know God has set me free. He has taken me from one place and put me on a higher place. God will do it. God will take you from one place and put you on another place, put you on a pedestal. That's what God would do. God would move you. He would advance you. God will do it. He'll bring you out. He'll wash you white as snow. He'll, he'll take your mind and turn your mind around. He'll change your mind. Somebody say he's a mind changer. He's a mind changer. God can change your mind. He can change your thoughts. He can change your thinking. God can do it. God can turn your heart around. He can turn your life around. He can take drugs that you were addicted to and you won't even like it anymore. God can do it. He can take the liquor that you are addicted to and turn it around and you won't even have the taste for it anymore. All you have to taste is old taste and see that the Lord is good. God is good. Come on, somebody out there to shout yeah. Shout yeah. What God can do in your life, no man can do. Not even your mother, not even your father. God can turn your life around. And then it goes on in that first verse. The, our fourth point is, he says that I have called you by your name. So God has called you by your name. That's our fourth point. Our fourth point is God has called you by your name. So not only did I buy you, he said, not only did I buy you with a price, but I called you by your name. Isn't it amazing how God knows our names? Those who are in the church, those saints, God knows your name. But to the church, God knows your name. To the believers, God knows your name. To the Christians, God knows your name. He knows your first name. He knows your middle name. He knows your last name. He knows your purpose. He knows your name. He knows your old name. He knows your new name. He knows your name. He And if he knows your name, he knows all about you. He knows, he knows who you are. He knows the way you are. He knows your ugly ways. He knows he know everything about you. He know where you live. He knows your weakness. He knows your strengths. He knows your shortcomings. He knows your name. You should be celebrating that God knows your name. You should be rejoicing that God knows your name. You should be shouting that God knows your name. You should be excited that God knows your name. And thank you, Holy Ghost. The reason why you should be shouting that God knows your name because your name, that means that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. That means you will spend eternity with God. That means that your name is already written in glory. My God. Oh my God. And I'm glad to know that that his name, somebody say that his name is above every name. His name is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of the things in heaven and of the things in earth and the things under the earth. And that every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And I'm so glad to know that, that, that Jesus is our Lord. He's my God. He's my Lord. 
and Savior Jesus Christ, the one who set me free, the one who redeemed me, the one who washed me white as snow, and the one who, who every single day he washes me, every single day, every single day I need, to, I need to be washed, every single day my mind need to be washed, and he has washed me with the blood of the lamb. Somebody say the blood, his blood, the blood, the blood. It happened because of the blood. Your life is changed because of the blood. Oh my God. Somebody say preach pastor AD. Oh my God, the blood changed changed your life. It has washed you white as snow. It has turned your mind around. It will pick you up, turn you around, and place your feet on solid ground. I'm telling you, the blood will change your mind. Just try Jesus. If you haven't tried Jesus, I dare you to try him. I dare you to try him. I dare you to submit yourself to God and watch how he turn your life around. Watch how he do... Uh, spectacular things in your life. Watch how you do amazing and shocking things in your life that will turn your life around. Trust me, I'm a living testimony and I'm telling you God can do it. Somebody holler out, God would do it. God would do it. He would do it. And then in that first verse, our last point comes. He said, I have called you by your name. And then he says, you are mine. So God says, you are mine. That's our fifth point. You are mine. God says, you are mine. You are mine. You're, you're my possession. You're my trophy. I love you. I, I know your name. I, I know who you are. I redeemed you. I saved you. I brought you out. I, written, I wrote your name in the Lamb's book of life. I cared for you. I nurtured you. I rocked you in my arms when you couldn't fall asleep. Have you ever uh, had a sleepless night and you asked God to rock you to sleep? God would do it. God will rock you to sleep. He'll put you in his uh, arms and rock you to sleep. That's why they called him the mini breasted one because he would as a nurturer and he would rock you to sleep. God would do it. You're you're my baby. You belong to me. God will rock his children to sleep. Yes, you're going to go through some drama. Yes, you're going through go, go through some pain. Yes, you're going through go, go through some adversity and some struggles and sickness. But I'm telling you, but when it's all said and done, somebody say, but when it's all said and done, when it's all over, you're going to be greater. You're going to be greater. You're going to be better than you were yesterday. I'm telling you, when you come out, to the other, on the other side of that situation, you will be able to withstand any type of hell that comes your way. God knows what he's doing. He knows every hair on your head. He knows everything about you because you're his and he made you. He created you and you, you are his. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And if you keep reading and go down, <laughs> y'all don't mind if I keep reading and keep preaching. It, the Bible says that in that second verse, it says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. <laughs> oh my God. Let's, let's keep going. So when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. I will carry you. He's saying, I will carry you. When you go through the, the dirty waters, when you go through the contaminated waters, I will be with you. I won't forsake you like your friends. I won't forsake you like your family. I'm going to be right there by your side. I'm going to carry you through the murky waters. I'm going to carry you through the flood. I'm going to carry you through the dirty waters, the messed up waters, the nasty waters, the contaminated waters. I'm going to carry you through and I'm going to be right there with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. For David said, I never seen a righteous forsaken nor his seed beggeth bread. And God said, I will carry you through the waters. I will carry you through the mountains. And God would do it. I'm going to be right there with you. Through hell, I'm going to be right there with you. Through pain, I'm going to be right there with you. Through sickness, I'm going to be right there with you. Through suffering, I'm going to be right there with you. And I promise you, Whatever you experience, whatever you go through, whatever trial comes your way, whatever test you have to pass, it will not overflow you. It will not overtake you. It will not overwhelm you. It will not kill you. I'm telling you, I'm right there by your side. I'll never leave you alone. I'm right there by your side. How many of you know that you're not in it by yourself. You're not in it alone. You're about to come out. You're not in it alone. God said in the word that he'll prepare a way of escape. Whatever you're going through, you're coming out. Somebody holler out, I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm coming out of this thing. I'm coming out of this mess. I'm coming out of this trash. I'm coming out of this rut. I'm coming out of this ditch. I'm coming out of this burden. I'm coming out of this sickness. I'm coming out. Somebody holler out, I'm coming out. 
I'm coming out no more. No more. God is about to do a new thing in my life. How out no more. You got to speak those things that are not as though there were no more. No more. God is about to do a great transition in my life. No more. No more. God is about to give me a breakthrough. No more. No more. Because he loves you. And I'm telling you, God loves you. And that is living life without fear. And those are the five points of living life without fear. God will never leave you. He will never, for, never forsake you. He'll never leave you alone. And then in that second verse, it continues to say, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. And when you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flames scorch you. For I am, <laughs> the third verse says, for I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. So isn't that amazing? I'm so glad to know that we have the God of Israel, that we have our Savior with you. For it says that I am, and we know who I am is. We thank you. And, and I think that I thank God for his son, Jesus, the great I am. He says, I am the great I am. And he leaves the seven I am's in the book of John. And I thank God for those seven I am's and, and who he is. And I thank God that he has saved us through the cross, with the cross, by the cross, and through the cross. And I thank God for that. And that early on Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, Jesus got up with all power in heaven and earth. And now we have been set free of sin. And God is right there by your side. I don't know who this message is for today, but God is right there by your side. You may have rebelled against him. You were, you were disobedient. And we all been there. We all been disobedient at times and messed up. None of us are perfect. Everyone, every man born of a woman is a few days full of trouble. Every last one of us are messed up. We are sinners saved by grace. Every last one of us. Nobody's better than another one. We all are messed up in some kind of way, shape, or fashion. We all are messed up. But I thank God for his grace in his mercy. I thank God for the blood that he shed on Calvary's cross. So now when God looks at us, he looks at us as righteous. He looked at us, he looked at us as holy because of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. He bared all of our sins on the cross. So he, he paid the perfect price. He paid the total price, the ultimate price. We don't have to sacrifice animals. We don't have to do none of that anymore. God Pay, Jesus paid it all on the cross. Every bit of it. He paid it all. That was full atonement. He paid it all. Full atonement, not part atonement. He paid it all. And I thank God for you once again. Thank God for uh, all your support. Thank you for joining us. God bless you. And I pray that that message would totally impact your life in a great way. And uh, remember your homework from Wednesday. And I asked you, um, what is the next uh, Pauline epistle after 2 Corinthians? Remember, the Bible is not in order like it was written, okay? The Bible, Paul written his, uh, his epistles. And so what is the next epistle that he wrote? Just put it in the description box. What is the next epistle that Paul wrote after 2 Corinthians? Well, Wednesday, we're going to continue in angel angelology. And um, from there, we'll go to Satanology and then we'll jump into the next Pauline epistle. But God bless you. Until next time, tune in Wednesday for Bible study. God bless you. And uh, our motto here at True Vine is with all lowliness and all gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love. True Vine, we are the church of love. God bless. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and join our online Christian family. Tithes, offerings, and donations can be made via Cash App at dollar sign TVMBC or by mail at True Vine Missionary Baptist Church, 1407 Grove Street, Houston, Texas, 77020. Thank you so much and have a blessed day.